Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Cutting with Chacha. And we're here today at the Matrix Technical Center in Sydney, Australia. And you're going to meet Jessica really soon. When Jessica arrived uh, today, she had um, grown out uh, balayage or highlights. And uh, Philip, who is a technical educator here for Matrix, has been working in the background getting that ready for me to cut. Today we also used Lightmaster from Matrix to get the blonde really uh, nice and clean, so to lighten the hair well really focusing on managing condition. We've prepped the hair today for the haircut using Food for Soft. It's a great product range from Matrix. You guys should check it out. So Jessica's hair today, I've been given somewhat of free reign. She's given me some parameters. She needs to be able to tie it back. Um, but for me as a hair cutter, basically what I say is I'm judged for what I leave behind, not for what I cut off. So what's most important is not really like cutting it short per se or leaving it even longer. It's about really making sure that we give something that compliments Jessica and makes her look and feel great. So let's get her in and let's get started on the haircut. This is Jessica. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a modern wash and wear mid-length haircut with shape in the front and the back uh, using a dry technique. First we're going to adjust the length and it's going to be somewhere between the chest and the collarbone. Then once we've done that, I'm going to focus on shaping around the front and then I'm going to come into the back and layer the back. Sectioning just to um, section the front out from the back. Um, the only rule I use is any hair that's not growing into the back, we don't include in the back, and that obviously changes in everyone's hair. Jessica um, was in earlier today, and Philip, as I mentioned, coloured her hair. So one of the focus he did was highlighting around the face. So this is a great technique, not only to shape the hair around Jessica's face, which is super easy to style. It's all about wash and wear, but it'll actually like help with enhancing and showing off that colour a little bit more. The, the first triangle um, will be the one that um, is our guide for the rest. So this will be the shortest. Just when you're doing it, make sure that especially because Jessica, if you notice, has an offset and part. Uh, disclaimer on that, don't try and move your clients part without asking them and try always, if you can, working where the hair parts naturally otherwise. Um, yes, you can part this anywhere, you can move it around if you want, but if you want wash and wear, ultimately it has to be um, worn best without manipulation, which is where the hair wants to part naturally. So when we do this and we take our triangle, to make sure when we push back, we've got even amounts of hair on both sides. So I just need a little bit more on the shallow side, shallow side being where there's less hair, about there. And then we're going to project it. Um, I guess it's a, if that's 90, that's 180, it's somewhere in between. Um, obviously the closer we do this to zero, the heavier it'll fall. So I want to go somewhere in between. So I don't have to rely on texturizing the hair too much. We use projection to dictate how the hair falls. Let's just try there. Always better to um, start longer and um, make that a bit bigger because it's getting lost a little bit. You can always add a hair to this. So what I might do is actually, once I section this again, I'm going to get Jessica to put her head down so you can actually see 
that section. Just pop your head down for me. You can see that there. And head up for me, gorgeous. So I've taken a little bit more hair because it looked a little bit like it was getting lost. I've cut that back to my guide. And I'm going to take an extra centimetre off. Because we almost want this to be like curtain bangs or short layers. I'm cutting the hair uh, parallel to my parting so that it's effectively a rectangle. And then while I've got the hair up there, I'm going to add some texture so I don't have to come back and do it. And you'll see why in a second. Okay, we're going to leave that. I'm happy with that that's falling. So it's now straight over the top. We're going to take another triangle. This is something that I use on my clients every single day. So this is not something that he smokes and mirrors that I don't believe you guys can use. I actually use this all the time. And it's exceptionally good when, um, as I do, I probably cut hair for about maybe four or five colorists a day, sometimes six, some work part time. So this is great for my clients with long hair. And I developed this technique because it allows me to be efficient. So when I arrive, Jessica is a great example of that. Hair's been coloured, it looks beautiful, I've got the easy job, it's already been flat brushed, so it hasn't been blow dried straight, it's been flat brushed, and then that's why I decided to start experimenting with dry cutting and implemented this technique, and I'm sure that other people do something similar or maybe even the same, because it allows me to then, at the end, without having to blow dry wet hair, I just style it at the end. So I'm going to look for my little section underneath, and you can see that there, and then I'm actually going to go past at about three centimetres. So you can see that's fallen out and you guys will see why in a second. So again, I'm gonna pick that up and I'm gonna texturize it while it's still there. I don't like to texturize it too much. This is just to provide a little bit of softness. I'm actually gonna make that slightly shorter. I think it's a little bit too long. And there's enough texture in there because I went quite deep. I'm going to see where that falls. And before we move on to the next step, what we want to do now, and I'm just going to spin Jessica around and then I'll spin it back to you because I want to see in the mirror. I'm going to get my flat brush. We're just going to brush it back off her face. And then when we push this forward, it should be the first two parts of her shaping around the front will be here and then underneath. So that looks really good. So when we pull this back, I just rake my fingers through it, off a face. Good to use a, a paddle brush because um, there's going to be cut hair in there and I like, I like to pull it away. So let's pull this all back. Make sure there's no knots because I comb, combed it in, in many different positions or directions. I'm going to push that forward. Let's see how this falls. So we should have like shape there in the front. So you should see the shape here and the shape underneath. So it's just here and here. So what, none of this has been done yet. Yeah, easy enough. Now I'm going to show how you connect these into the ends and then why that's important before we move into the back. So we worked using vertical sections to do those two uh, primary triangles, which is essentially is like a guideline. And now we're going to work horizontally and connect them to the hair on the end, which is this hair here. And I'll be projecting it this way, but I'm going to come back around so you can actually see on the inside and you'll be able to see how I actually hold and project the hair. So we're working with this panel here, 90 degrees, 180 degrees. I'm going to go somewhere in between, which is where we projected those um, vertical triangle sections. I'm having the hair evenly spread out of the plane of my comb. I'm not bunching it all together like this. And then if you need to get down a little bit, bend your knees, and then we want to project that up. We're going to see our first triangle fall out. There's the end of our second one. That's where we're going to be cutting. And I'm over directing to train, retain length. And I'm cutting parallel with my fingers. My fingers are diagonal, so we're doing there. And we let that go. This is a little bit tricky for right-handed people on the other side. Um, well, this is easier for left hand and then vice versa for the other side. Again, finding that triangle. However, for those of you who um, struggle to project the hair that way, you can stand behind, if you like. 
and we can do it like this. And there's our first triangle fell out. There's our second one. And then hopefully, if it's worked, we should have our shape blending all the way through to the ends. And you can see how that just ties in all in the bottom there. You have to understand this hair's been flat brushed. It's not smoothed or manipulated in any way. And you can see that we've got the shape there, got a second triangle there, and then it just diffuses it in there. The difference between this and traditional way of shaping hair around the face is we're not shaping here on the inside. We're actually layering the hair on the top to create the shape. Why is this important? I'm glad you asked. It's important for um, first and foremost for wash and wear and also so that even though we've lightened because we've laid the hair, we've lightened the hair in terms of the weight and texture that's left. For the best part, the inside of the hair is left unchanged other than this little bit here. So we don't have this choppiness around the face, which is a classic look. And I find that it's more versatile. So you can straighten the hair, you can wear it wavy, you can let it dry naturally, you can do nothing. Um, I've been doing this for a while, my clients love it. It's probably the most requested haircut I get, um, which is why I wanted to share it with you guys today. So you can just see how that's already coming in. And now we're just going to then take this through to the back and I'll show you why it's important to do this first before you go into the back. Now it's time to connect the front to the back. So as I comb Jessica's hair back, we can actually see the shape that we've done in the front coming into the back. This is going to be our guideline. So you can see it here. So we're going to take, funnily enough, a triangle section, which probably goes in the front from the middle of her eyebrow on each side to the crown in the back. And this is how we're going to find the guideline for the hair in the, for, sorry, this is how we're going to create ourselves the guideline so that we know where to go from here in the back. So you can see this is largely all one length untouched hair. I'm going to project this hair up. I'm going to spin you around to face the camera, please. And then you can pop your head forward in one sec. Yep. So you can see that I've done this. And you can come back to your right. No, no, just this way, yep, perfect. So now with this hair all projected up, we're going to actually see those triangles that we created in the front, and we're going to shift the distribution to the back of the hair before we cut it, making sure that we're over the top of the parting. We're going to shift towards the back. There's the front, and see, hit this long piece here. This is where we're going to connect the back. Now you can make this shorter or longer. You could flatten it out if you wanted to. I like to use uh, short to long uh, design lines because I find it blends better. It's also good for when um, Jessica is pushing her hair back off her face, short hair directs long hair. So when she goes like this, it's going to push all the other hair back off her face. Now I'm going to bring her back around in the back. and I'm just going to head back for me just so you can see what's happening here and back up. So you can see that we've created, this is coming from the back, short to long on both sides. And now, when we push this forward and we find a natural parting, we're going to work with triangle sections from the top to the bottom, sort of like little skinny pie sections, I guess. And we're going to find where our guideline is. Should be about there. I'll let you guys see what I did. Just spin back around that way. So what I did was I grabbed this from the front. You can see the guideline there. And then we're going to start cutting the hair in the back. There it is. And then I'll spin Jessica back around. If we're happy with that, that should look absolutely seamless and gentle. And now we've got a guide, the guideline for the rest of our haircut. So this, this again can be personalized for you guys. Chin down for me a little bit. So if you wanted to take more hair out of the ends, which I do, we can now adjust this lower, we can take it higher. So if you want it to be not taking too much hair out of the ends, you project it further away from the ends. If you want it somewhere in between, um, you can come down closer to 90 degrees. I'm gonna go somewhere around like 135-ish, which is where I did it there. And then we just keep working the hair from side to side back to the middle. And anything that hangs over our guideline, we take off.
shortly we'll be running out of here this will be our last section this probably won't reach there but we're going to check anyway Just a tiny bit. Just remember we've done no texturizing yet. Now we do that on the other side. So we go back to our middle section. Obviously nothing to cut, there's our guideline. And we're gonna now work this hair back into the middle as well. I like to um, keep the hair, especially at this length, uh, I don't like to take too much weight um, in, front of the, in front of the chest, like on the collarbone area, so that's why I'm over directing it to the middle. Yes, you can follow it around if you wanted to take more weight out of the NT, but I just get worried about having it, the hair too sparse on the shoulders. So you can always like um, go back and adjust your angle, maybe adjust it to the corners, you can follow it all the way around to the behind the ear if you wanted to, if you wanted to have it really soft and light, um, you could. I've almost run out of hair again. Okay, now here comes the hard part. Now this can be done in two sections if you want. I like to do it in one. So this literally goes to the corner of the ear all the way back. So like above the ear here to the other side and I like to try and texturize it all at once now this can be a little bit tricky if you don't have huge hands like me um, but I just find it's a better way to do it so we're first going to project the hair horizontally and then we're going to move back into the side and I'm going to get Jessica to do 300 and see well 180 degrees because I actually prefer to texturize the hair from this angle. Just because I'm right-handed, I like to have um, the ability to come from the back rather than from the front, from this way in. I like to do it this way. And we're very gently going to point cut the hair. Now, you want to make sure that you're not putting gaps in it because otherwise you're going to put like literally holes everywhere. So this is just about giving the hair space so that um, it doesn't look too bulky. It falls a little bit differently, encourages a little bit of movement, but it's more about addressing the density more than anything. Always project the hair to the same place you cut it when you're applying texture. I find that works best. And once we've done this, it's time to do some styling because we're finished. This is important if you didn't project the hair close enough to the ends because you didn't want layering in the ends to create a little bit of separation so we don't have contrasting density.
done a great job with your colour. It's beautiful. Really good, really, really good. That's pretty good. Not bad for an amateur. <laughs> what happens when I'm professional, eh, mate? This is going to be cool like this. It's literally effort to say.
And that's our finished look. So he just like, just lifts it up there. Don't move, we're gonna go over to my product shelf here, grab some style fixer. Just head to the side for me, thank you. Just use some style fixer on the inside. Try not to, I don't actually mind when it's um, somewhat airy um, because like it's real hair, right? So just spin around, you can see in the back, haven't overdone it. Just made sure that it's like believable. Wanna make it look like Jessica's um, really good at doing a hair, not like she's just been to the hair salon. Does that make sense? Like it's, you want it to be um, authentic and believable as it can be. And um, yeah. We're done. Thank you. Let's go.